Okay, let's talk about loops. Okay, so why do you need a loop? Well, I suppose you have to do something a bunch of times. So, you know, for example, I want to print, welcome to Java, you know, a hundred times. Do you want to copy and paste that a hundred times? And then what if you got to change it? And what, what if you miscount, you know? So yeah, that's it's not a good way to solve the problem. I mean, a hundred times, eh. So you use loops. What kind of loops have you used in the past? Think about it for, for, for a second, and I will pa pause this for a moment for you to think about what kind of loops have you used um, in your lifetime? So go, 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 go ahead and pause, and I'll do something. Okay, I'm back. Um, you've entered IDs or password loops. So if you put in a bad password, you got to do it again. That's a loop. If you put in an invalid ID, it says, hey, invalid ID and you have to do it again. That's a loop. And a lot of times you do it so many times, say five, six times, um, it'll cut you out, say you can't, you have to do a, you have to uh, call IT or something. Uh, music looping, if you're looping your playlist, that's a loop. Um, waiting for a mouse pick, mouse click or keyboard entry. Your computer is looping all the time, waiting for us to do something. So it's waiting for us to type in something, waiting for us to move the mouse and click on something. It's waiting, it's looping, it's looping, looping, looping. Basically it's asking, has the mouse been clicked? 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 Over and over and over again. Um, so it's a loop. Um, row, row, row your boat when you sing. There's a loop. 100 bottle of beers on the wall. There, there's no, no loop, 100 bottles of beer. Um, so a loop is a repetition structure. It repeats. So repeats multiple times, um, same in the top or sometimes the bottom in terms of number of repeats. So there's a condition. There's a, there's a pretest or post-test Boolean condition. Sound familiar? Um, so this is very similar to if statements, except it's looping. Um, a count control loop repeats a predetermined number of times. So if you go loop 10 times, it does it 10 times, and that's what it does. Okay, so here's a pretest loop. A while loop is an example of the two types of loops, pretest and post loop. Pre-test and post-test, an example of a pre-test loop would be a while loop. So while condition, whatever it happens to be, you know, while something um, equal is less than 10, while some condition is true, you, you, you execute this code to, to, to repeat. So here's the Java condition. And this is what, what, it, what it looks like. If this condition is never true, this code here is never executed. So the condition, the um, if it is true, it'll drop into the loop. Um, so here's an example of a while loop in Java. Oop, let's go back to it. So here we have a while count less than 100. It's going to keep on printing out Welcome to Java. It's going to add to the count one at a time. So count starts at zero. It's less than 100. So then it's going to print it and then add one to it. When it hits 100 times, the count equals count plus one it equals 100. It'll stop and it'll get out and go go to the next statement after the loop. Here's a little flow chart. Um, same kind of thing as a if statement, right? So if the continuation is true, it keeps on doing this loop here, you know, loop, looping over here. When it becomes false, then it gets out of the loop. It goes out. So here's a trace through. So we got the while loop here. So counts initializes the count to zero. It looks and says, is, is count greater than two? Is that true or false? That is true. Zero is less than two, so that is true. Therefore, it's going to welcome to Java. It's going to add one to it. Counts now equal to one. And it's going to go back. Is one less than two? Yes, it is. Therefore, print it again. Add to it again. Now it's equal to two. Is count two less than two? It is not. It is false. So it gets out. Gets out completely out of the, the uh, loop. Okay. Um, sentinel value. So you need to know what a sentinel value is. You're, we'll be using this phrase a lot in this class and also other classes. Um, so you're going to loop a certain number of times. And you, maybe you don't know how many times. I say enter in a name and just keep on entering names and it keeps on looping around. When you're done, enter quit. Quit would be a sentinel value. It tells, that tells the program, oh, stop. We're done entering in names. So here, here's some examples. So ages, 34, 24, 86, 23, etc. Names, Bob, Ted, Carol, Alice, and weights, 145, 122, 98, 43, etc. So the last values here, 999, quit, or zero, those are all sentinel values. And they're, they're good sentinel values in that because ages, not, there's probably no way age 999, right? So the, that can't be a valid age. Names, we're not gonna allow the word quit as a name. Just, and you can pick whatever you want, stop, quit, you know, whatever, whatever you want. Um, but basically, we can do an if statement or a while statement, keep on reading names and while the name entered is not equal to quit. 
weights. Zero, maybe zero is not a valid weight. So when you hit zero, you get out of the loop. So that's what Sentinel values are for, is to get out of the loop. Okay, so one thing to be aware of is when you're looping, to use integers. Don't use floating points. Don't use you know doubles or floats. Use integers themselves. Computers are really good at counting one, two, three, four, five. They're not good at, at, at counting one third plus one third plus one third. Because what is one third in a, in a computer? It has to be a decimal, right? 0. 0.3333, three, 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 how many threes? Forever, it would fill up all your memory and still not be enough. So, so you can never put a one third in your computer. It doesn't exist. But what you can do is put something that's close enough, that's good enough. Um, what that means is that floating point arithmetic is not necessarily as accurate as integer arithmetic. So it's, it's really important to use integers whenever you can when doing this arithmetic, and then maybe you know divide by 100 to get to the decimals that you need in order to do whatever you need to do. So anyways, when you're counting, count integers. Don't count decimal points. Okay, here we have a post-test loop. So we have a pre-test loop, now we have a post-test loop. This is a do-while loop. Post-test means it goes through the loop and does a loop after the code. So this code is always executed at least once because the condition is after the code. So it says do this while this condition is true. So it does it the first time, then it evaluates the condition. If it's false, it gets out immediately. If it's true, it loops back up to the do and repeats again. So, so a post-test loop always executes the code at least once. So here's a, a uh, flowchart. Um, you notice it comes through here from here, goes into the, the loop body, always does that at least once, then it does the, the, uh, the condition. And if it's false, it gets out. If it's true, it comes back, comes back around again. Okay, so at the end of the, this uh, uh, chapter, and you, after reading the chapter, you should be able to name the two types of loops which are pretest and post-test. You should be able to give an example of each. A post-test loop would be a do-while. A pretest loop would be a while loop. Um, you should be able to describe what a single value is. You should be able to use both types of loops in your code as required, a while and a do-while. Um, next, we're going to talk about for loops, and we'll see you in a minute.